Games of War 4th Edition brings you the battles of World War II in epic 15mm scale. Go to beastsofwar.com to get the latest in news, tactics and tutorials. Fight for the Iron Kingdoms as a Warcaster. Take control of the mighty jacks, arcane devices and dark sorceries to bring the fight to the War Machine Hub on beastsofwar.com. So with most of the, well, pretty much all of the weathering done, uh, I'm going to show you a few examples of finished buildings, nice and up close under camera, and then we're going to look at the ruin parts as well. So let's start with a, a barracks block, shall we? And this is what we get once we have all the streaking down, we have all the chipping in place, we are left with a very charming looking, good little strong barracks block. And of course we have our blue and our uh, bone colour in there as well. And overall... I think it looks quite good. It's different from the stuff that we have because we have a few of these before, um, but they've been painted in sort of desert y green, you know, army green and desert colours and stuff like that. Um, but it's nice to see something a bit more proper sci fi, proper heavy duty looking as well. Um, over to our storage tanks. So this is one of our finished articles. And I'll bring in the action tank as well, which slot together and just sit quite happily like that. And we have the blue that travels around the two upper tanks with the bone colour going around the building. So it all looks pretty good. Our fan, or our vent, is looking like this now with its streaking in place. Not, not terribly different, it's maybe a little too dark for it to really stand out. And I'm very happy with how the, um, the blades have turned out. Now, that's everything done except for the ruin. As it stands, the ruin has been zenithed ghost tinted and has the silver details put in but nothing else because we had quite a few of these we didn't want to spend too much time on them so for the the first instance was how do we simplify what we've done in the other buildings on one of these and essentially it boils down to doing this anything ghost tinting picking out the silver details and then just washing it basically um, we'll be using our ghost tint mix of a little bit of brown with a lot of the brown uh, the black and we're going to be weathering this down to make it look very blasted. So first up we're going to start with the edges. We go very heavy over those because that makes it look a bit more scorched. So that already looks pretty dirty and messed up and you know it's been been through a bit of trouble in its time. Uh we'll also go along the inside here, I think. Well, it's kinda dark enough, but I think that'll hit that up quite nicely in the end. So the last thing we want to do on this is very quickly stipple some chipping onto it. But we're not going to just go with the standard chipping that we have been using, which was just the chrome. Uh, with the chrome, I'm going to mix a little bit of Army Painter Oak Brown. And I'm just going to mix that into my palette right now. So, for example, here I'll just bring what I have as a palette under close cam. And I have some of my chrome sat out here. I'm just going to apply a liberal dose of that onto it. And then we'll mix it up and see what we get from that. So I didn't want it, the, the main thing was I didn't want the chipping to be as bright as everything else on the, the buildings that are still being used. I wanted this to look a bit more aged. So maybe it's been, because it's been blasted apart, it's been neglected. Um, you can also talk about heat damage and stuff like that, causing metal to change colour and stuff like that. So... You know, just consider a couple of things. I always find when um, if you're if you're looking to do a ruined building, uh, a little bit of research will go a heck of a long way. Something as simple as, and I hate to say it, but um, checking out images of Chernobyl, like any pictures from inside the building uh, after the disaster, watching documentaries on them, 
um, other particular things like looking at ships that have ran aground, you know, years and years ago and haven't been cut up, looking at that sort of stuff and seeing how materials change over time, uh, how their appearances change, how things fatigue, how things rust, how things rot. And you build up a good mental library of what metals will do over time, what plastics do over time. And you put that, you put a little bit of that understanding into some of your modeling work and it just, it opens up a whole new area for you. I know a lot of people say that when you're doing sci-fi, there is no wrong answer, but I find that if you take something sci-fi and you base it on realistic things, you know, things that we know and understand a bit better, the overall effect actually comes out to be more realistic, yet still retain a sci-fi feel to it. Now, enough of my little rambling. Uh, I have my dollar chipping effect done, so what I'm going to do is I'm only going to lightly touch it because I think I don't want to focus up too much and make it look really apparent. Just touch a few edges here. Really focusing on the stuff that's clearly metallic in nature. Just little bits and pieces here. And that, guys, is really it. You don't want to doom too much to the ruins. Just get them down. They look similar enough when they're on the table. And, uh, yeah, apart from that, I'd consider that done. I'd consider this stuff done. So, guys, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoy the layout. Hi, everybody. We are back, and the uh, the terrain is finished, eh, John? It is. Um... And we just couldn't resist making a massive table layout with all our 40k stuff on here, so all our Mechanicus and our Tau, yeah. just to really see what this terrain was like when it was down on the table. Mm -hmm. um, so up here we have obviously all our Mechanicus set up, we have the army moving off to fight some Tau, we have our big sort of hangar going on here with the Dune Walker coming out of it. Mm -hmm. um, Plenty of cool stuff there. We have some of our hab blocks or research blocks or whatever you want yeah. to call them. I love the fact that we have a stealth suit team just rolling out of one of the, the ruins here yeah. into the side of the army just as you would expect they would. Yeah, and the ruins look really good as well. I'm mm. actually quite happy how we laid them all out. Yeah, I love the way you've done the burn effect on those. It just it darkens them down and makes it feel as if the fire is done and dusted. Yeah, well that was a very simple step. That was just basically going... Let's not highlight it as heavily as the other stuff before putting the ghost tent on. That yeah. way it did look a bit more worn down and burnt mm -hmm. uh, in a case. Yeah, if you had to pick your favourite piece from this side of things, what would it be? These. Really? Yes. Yeah. These these big sort of... They must be like the tops of cooling towers that are underground or something like that. <laughs> they look magnificent. Mm. And once you have that highlighting on those fan blades done up nice, it just really shines. Yeah, yeah, it's really nicely done. What about you? Any particular favourites? For me, it's it's got to be this. Yeah. But it's only one part of this. Right, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright, so at the start of this vlog, we were talking about doing some Star Wars stuff with this as well. Yes. What I want to do is, I want to take the front of this, shave this back piece off, and use Lloyd's uh, sponge cliff technique to actually lay this into a mountainside mm. for uh, some underground bunkers, which I think could look really, really yeah. cool. That would that's that's my thinking anyway. The other idea one of our uh, friends had was you take this off and you actually do a little printout in here with a Millennium oh, Falcon sitting in it. Yeah, <laughs> that would be kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, but 40k wise, uh, my favourite part, of course, is this nice big block and line of sight piece of terrain. Yeah. I think there are some additional bits that are meant to go onto that for the actual Kickstarter, mm -hmm. but overall it looks fantastic. Yeah. I love how the army looks just laid out into it, and I mm -hmm. love the fact that you went for a different shade of red yeah. to the actual army, because this looks as if it's just sat being bleached and weathered the whole time, mm -hmm. whereas the other stuff looks as if it's been kept in a garage under a tarp. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say under a tarp in the mechanics <laughs> case, you know, in a shrine perhaps. Yeah, well, you know, shrine tarp. <laughs> Alright, fair enough. <laughs> Let's go and have a look at some of the toy stuff that we have. So, yeah. Well, we just just note that if you want to see how this stuff's been painted, head on over to Backstage and we have a vlog covering how we did the army as well as how we did the terrain that corresponds with it. Mm -hmm. And what, this, uh, what the Kickstarter items did was add to that and give us some of these really big pieces like this in the middle, mm -hmm. which looks superb. Nice mix of yeah. HDF and foam in there. And the ruins. The yeah. ruins for the Tau side are some really, really nice detailed pieces. Mm -hmm. And again, you've got that nice 
down and dirty, burnt and gritty feel to it. Yeah. But it doesn't feel as if it's been burnt like last night. It feels like it's been sitting there and it's being weathered again. Yeah. So I mean like the paint scheme that you've done on this looks really, really good. Mm -hmm. I mean like the vehicles and stuff as well on here. Actually doing a white main terrain set and then having your army a different colour and such a strikingly different colour. Yeah. It makes the army just lift up out of the table and the train lift up out of the table. Yeah. Which I think looks really, really cool. They they stand on their own pretty well mm. as individual pieces. Now when you put it together, your army isn't lost in the train and the train isn't lost in the army. Yeah, which is a nice this touch. Is the thing you sometimes find. If you do a scheme matching terrain to army, the army can get lost in it. Yeah, absolutely. I do love the way that these here match up as well. Actually having Devilfish sitting here next to the sort of barracks blocks so that the Fire Warriors can run out, load in and off they go. Yeah. Um, and let's move on up because my particular favourite piece of this is the barricade set. Oh, you like being able to do a nice defensive line? I love the looks of these. Oh, come on, for Tau, defensive lines are sort of their bread and yeah. butter, really. Well, they're, they're, they always have been very much a stand and shoot army. So actually having terrain that you can lay out and make it look, look purposeful yeah. rather than just some random crates and barrels and stuff. Tau wouldn't do that. No, absolutely not. Um, any favourite pieces out of this set? Um... Honestly, it, for me, it's got to be the ruins. Yeah. It has such a nice dynamic. This set of terrain has always been a really clean set. Mm -hmm. So actually seeing it broken and dirty, I think works really well. And having the ruins for both sets, I think is a nice touch because it looks as if, you know, there's maybe some long range artillery at either end of the table just firing shells yeah. at each other and just something, taking lumps out of each other's base. Something has happened before these two armies have come into clash. Preparatory bombardment. Yeah, exactly. Probably from orbit too. Um, <laughs> although if it was from orbit you might just have a crater nothing on the table quite possibly <laughs> um, my favorite pieces I'd probably agree with you the ruins or the barricades really are mine mm. because they're the most versatile out of everything because you can really interact with all the ruins and you can interact with the barricades very yeah. well yeah uh, it is one thing to note though on the actual Kickstarter this I think it's still running on Kickstarter at the minute so if you're wanting to grab this you can go over and get it but the ruins themselves actually come with some additional bases so that yep. you can mark out where the actual beginning and end of the area terrain is yeah and that's that's the thing when you're playing 40k with stuff like this there's you want the, that clear line yeah the ruins are counted as area terrain now yep. so you have to be in there and it has to be clearly designated so. yes yes well uh john all i can say is nice work mate it's not bad <laughs> not bad it not looks bad. fantastic it's got <laughs> that epic feel you see if i'm just standing here looking up the way yeah that just looks like an epic battle about to happen mm -hmm. well that's it for another one. Uh, like I said, if you guys want to come over and see how the Tau stuff was done, that's all on Backstage and another uh, hobby blog. Mm -hmm. um, until then, guys, put your comments down below. Let's get a conversation started about what you think of this terrain set and the Kickstarter. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now, and be sure to check out beastofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.